Hello, this is Justin at the Tech Train again, and welcome to part three of learning to program in Small Basic. In the last tutorial, we looked at how to uh, have input, have data inputted by the user into the computer, and how we were able to store that information in something called a variable. We also understood about outputting information. So using right line uh, within the text window object to display information from the computer. So that way the computer is able to communicate with us and we are able to communicate with the computer. Now we started uh, with something here that joined together two things. We use this plus sign here and this little plus sign is connecting the word hello with the contents of the variable name. Remember that a variable is simply a label stuck on a box, if you like to think of it like that, um, which is simply a place inside the computer's memory. There are millions of these little virtual boxes and we can label one uh, with whatever we want. In this case, we've used the label name and then store a single piece of information in that particular box. So here we've said to the computer, write the line, hello, and then after that, put whatever is in the variable name. And this little plus sign here is something called concatenation. Concatenation is a long word that basically means joining two things together. So we're joining the string hello with the variable name. And concatenation uses one of two symbols. In small basic, we use the plus sign, which adds together words or phrases or variables. In some programming languages, uh, in fact, in most, you'll find it's the ampersand symbol like that. So there are little differences sometimes between different programming languages, but in small basic, it's really simple. It's just the plus sign. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we can use this plus sign to concatenate or join together as many phrases or as many strings and as many variables as we like. So what we're going to do here is say, um, hello, what is your name? So we've outputted that information, that string. We're then having the person's name inputted and stored in this variable name. And then we're outputting the words hello and their name. What we're going to do is add to that sentence, add to that phrase being outputted, um, the words and how old are you? And then the computer's going to ask us for that information, store it in another variable, and then we're going to have a final output which will concatenate strings and two variables. So let's see how we can do this then. So hello plus name. Now we need to join something else um, to this. So hello, in my case Justin, plus, and then we need to open speech marks because this is what will always be displayed. So the words in orange will always be displayed. The variables, the names in black here, that will change depending on what information the user gives the, the, the computer. So hello will always be appeared, uh, will appear. Name will obviously depend on what the user types in. And then the words, and how old are you? In speech marks, again, those words will always appear. Uh, so they'll always appear just like that. So we've got three parts now to this uh, sentence. I'm going to close the brackets at the end of that. And notice how with three parts to the sentence, we need two concatenation symbols uh, to join those pieces together, like three puzzle pieces being connected together. String, variable, string. Now, on the next line, of course, we need now to wait for the user to type something in. So a little bit like this line here with name equals text window dot read, we need to have something, uh, a label again for a particular uh, bit of information and being read from the text window. 
Now we could use the same variable name again, but the problem is if we do that, well, two problems. First of all, uh, whatever the user now types in, if we say equals uh, text window dot read, if we do that, uh, then yes, the uh, user can type in their age and the age will be stored in this variable. But a variable can only contain one bit of information at a time. And if you change what that bit of information is, then whatever was there before has gone. So if we have the age put into this box, then we will have lost their name. We won't have any clue anymore what their name is. Now, that might be fine, but we actually want to be able to use their name and their age in a sentence. So it would make more sense if we used a new variable and in this case called it age. And the second uh, problem with using name as a variable name here is that it's a bit confusing when you're looking at the code because name now contains age. You always want to make sure your variables, your labels, uh, make sense. It tells you as a programmer um, what sort of information there is in that variable. So we're saying age, a new variable, equals whatever the user types. We'll read whatever is in the text window. So now we've asked their name, we've stored that name in a variable, we've then outputted some concatenated strings and a variable, and now we have read a second bit of information from the text window and stored that in our other variable called age. It's time for our final line of code now, and this will concatenate strings and both variables. So we're going to start with text window dot right line. And I'm not typing the whole thing out. I'm not a really fast typist there. Um, I'm simply typing the first couple of letters. And then when I see it in that little pop up window, I can scroll down to it. I just press enter and it completes that for me. So open brackets, open speech marks. And I'm going to write hello and a space because I need a space before the next bit of information then a concatenation symbol to join together uh, the variable name, then a concatenation symbol again to connect that bit of the sentence to another string. You are, and then we'll close speech marks, and another concatenation symbol here, and we'll say age, plus another concatenation symbol, years old. So what we've got here now are three strings. The strings are in orange. They will always appear exactly as we've written them in our code. So the word hello with a space after it, a comma and then the words you are with a space after them, and a space and then the word years old, full stop. So those words in orange will always appear, but in between them will be the information stored in these two variables. So the information stored in the variable name, which is whatever the user typed up here when they were asked for it, and the information stored in the age variable as well. So if I run this program now, hello, what is your name? I will type my name, Justin. There you can see the concatenation working the first time. There's the string. There is the contents of the variable name. So that's been replaced with the contents. And then this string here is always going to be the same. How old are you? 46. Press enter. And there you are. You've got two variables. Uh, the variable name and the variable age, which have been replaced with the contents of those variables. So the contents of the variable uh, name has been replaced with Justin, and the contents of the variable age has been replaced with the age. And so the concatenation has connected all of those different parts together. String, variable, string, variable, string. So what I'd like you to do now is, uh, as I said before, 
don't just simply assume, yep, I can remember that. Um, minimize this, switch over to small basic, see if you can do that unaided without looking at my code, um, test it. If it doesn't work, brilliant, you're trying. Uh, have a look at the error messages, see if you can spot what the problem is. If you need to, come back and have a look at my code again, just pause the video so you've got the screen, the code on the screen. Have a look at it, see where you went wrong. Um, if you did go wrong, you'll probably realize, oh yeah, it was just a plus sign. And um, I see it a lot, plus signs missing, the concatenation symbols missing. Um, so that's, uh, that's something that's very, very commonly done. So don't worry if you make that mistake, just simply um, look for it, spot it, uh, correct it if you can, and then try again. And that's just like riding a bike. As I've said in the last couple of tutorials, um, you can't learn to program without making mistakes. And in fact, uh, mistakes are a fact of life if you are a programmer. So don't worry about it. You're in good company if you are making mistakes in your code. Um, so I hope that was helpful. The next tutorial we're going to look at is going to cover um, maths, so simple maths, arithmetic uh, operations. So looking at how to do calculations such as plus, minus and so forth in small basic. So I'll see you in that tutorial. So if you enjoyed this video and you found it useful, please do click the subscribe button. And don't forget, if you hit the subscribe button, click the little bell icon next to it and you'll be notified when I upload the next video so that you can keep up to date with this tutorial series. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them below. I do read all comments and they do help to inform future videos. And I'm always happy to offer help and advice as well. Uh, if you want more specific advice or you want to be able to download resources which I create in these videos, uh, please head on over to patreon.com forward slash the tech train. You can sign up there and receive a whole load of additional benefits and advantages as well including one-to-one -one technical support and help. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and leave a like, and I'll see you in a future video.